chickens for meat and chickens for eggs, and we also had ducks for eggs. Well, I got a new job, and I'm pretty excited about it. This job is the biggest job I have ever done. If you haven't heard, I'm a father now. My, my wife and I, we just recently had a beautiful baby girl, and we just brought her home from the hospital yesterday. So last night was the first night having her at home with us, and I am so excited to be a father. Uh, now being a father for me is something that's very kind of scary but exciting because me personally, if you guys know my story, I didn't grow up with a dad. Um, my dad ended up dying when I was a kid. Um, a few years later, my mom remarried. And so I never really had, uh, I went through this stage in my life which I feel like was probably the most important stage in my life and I didn't have a father. So that makes it very exciting but also a little scary to be a father myself because I don't really know what I'm doing. Well, I, I feel like most fathers don't really know what they're doing when they have a kid. <laughs> I think it's just a, a learning experience as we go. But I'm super excited about this job. I feel like it is the most important job ever. Um, and I think that other fathers would agree with me on that respect. I think, I think the father's duty is more than just bringing home the bacon, essentially. I think uh, we as fathers have such an amazing responsibility to, uh, to bring honor to our child and teach that child how to, how they should act, how they should grow, how they should think. Um, I'm just so excited about all the things that fatherhood will bring and I know that I have a lot to learn about it, so I'm super excited about that. So since this is our first day home, I uh, got to do a few things. I got to take a shower, I got to shave nice, it was pretty cool. And another thing that I got to do today is my truck has been at the auto shop for about two weeks because um, I dropped it off because I needed to get it smogged um, and I just have we've been at the hospital so I haven't been able to pick it up. Alright, just called the auto shop and they are sending an Uber to come pick me up. Boy, another thing I got to do today is mow my lawn. There's my trailer. All by itself. Awesome how people have really come together and, and really helped us out and shown us their support through this time that my daughter's been in the hospital. Actually, right now I'm heading up to our church where uh, people have been bringing us meals um, for the last three weeks uh, and they bring it about every three days or so. Um, and apparently, we have a few meals at church right now that I need to go pick up. Um, but it's just been super awesome. Um, all the support, all the people coming around us, helping us out, um, offering us their love and their prayers, and we greatly appreciate it. Man, it is so nice to be in my own truck. I mean, you know, do you know how it feels to like sit in your recliner? Like just that, that hug. Man, I love sitting in this truck. It is uh, kind of weird, but it feels awesome to be back in this truck. Got the food from church. They hooked me up with a box because I had a lot, so that's pretty awesome. Man, I gotta, I gotta say a little something about the Uber driver that took me to the auto shop this morning. He had such an amazing story. Uh, he was telling me he, so he's originally from India. He came over to the United States when he was way younger, and uh, he just recently retired as he was a CPA his whole life, um, and he moved up here to Sacramento from down south, um, and. What he's loved his whole life is cooking. Um, so what he decided to do was to go down to the local college that has a super awesome culinary um, department there, and he signed up to go to culinary school. He is 65 years old, and he is just about to finish culinary school this fall. Um, super exciting, and I talked to him a little about what he loves about cooking, and he says that that you know he's grown up cooking Indian food because that's what he, that's where he's from. Um, that's what he that's what he loves to eat. Um, but he, he says that he's always wanted to make 
a super amazing steak. So he said someone at this culinary school, one of his professors, just used to own a steakhouse for like 29 years. And he's been really been, been mentored by this guy. And now he told me he knows how to cre- he knows how to cook the best steak ever. And what he wants to do once he graduates from culinary school is he wants to open up a steakhouse on the main strip of the city that I live in, which is super exciting. This guy is 65 years old, retired from a career, driving Uber on the weekdays, and he and he currently does catering in the in the uh, weekends. Um, he's 65 years old. He has a passion. And he's decided to follow that passion, which I think is so exciting. I think that there's something to learn from that, is that it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how young you are. If you want to do something, if you are passionate about something, go for it. Do the research. Find out what you need to do to follow your dreams. And maybe when you do it, maybe you're going to realize that, hey, that really wasn't your dream after all. But it never hurts to try. Life is too short to not try things. Life is too short to not do things that you love. from Vista Print. Super excited about this. Let's see what's in here. A whole bunch of business cards. Some more business cards. This is my other job that I just got going here. The Handyman Journey. I am now, I just launched a consulting business called The Handyman Journey. And I now have courses live on my website at handymanjourney.com. And I got a brand new business card. Isn't that sweet? Got some new, got some new magnets. Pretty exciting, got two of them. This is really all the advertising that I do on my truck. See, I was advised by my, um, my insurance broker that if I put any lettering on my truck, then it really changes the insurance needs for my truck because it really goes from like residential to commercial and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I've never really put um, any lettering on my truck. Wait, yes I have. Let me show you guys something. I did have lettering on my truck at one time. I had lettering on my truck at one time and that was this. You're, if you guess it, this is a freezer. And we have this thing in the back of our truck. This is actually the first business, small business that my wife and I ever started. And it was Agape Farm, the farm of faith, hope, and love. And if you guess it, we actually uh, sold catfish so um, and organic produce. Uh, we, this was our first business adventure. We had this freezer in the back of my Ford Ranger. Uh, we had a generator in the, back of the, in the back of the Ford Ranger as well that ran this thing because we bought catfish from the boss that I, cur- that I worked for then which he had, a, he had a little catfish farm, so we bought catfish from him. We would butcher the catfish, package the catfish, and sell the catfish, and this is how we would deliver it to either the store or the people that bought the catfish from us. Um, this was a pretty cool, uh, pretty cool adventure. Wasn't the best business model that we found out fairly quickly because my boss owned all the catfish and we had to buy it from him. He sold us the catfish at you know two fifty a pound for the catfish, but the catfish really doesn't, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of meat on the catfish, but there's a lot of weight on the catfish that isn't sellable meat. So the, the meat that we sold, like just fillets and stuff like that, we would have to sell almost at seven seven fifty per half pound just in order to make a profit on that. Um, we did the the best of selling those catfish was when people would buy the whole catfish themselves. We just gut it. They buy you know a, you know a catfish that still has a skin on it and everything. That would be the best. Um, but we couldn't find many many customers that wanted that because they wanted a nice filleted catfish for that. So what we quickly went into, we did this for about a year. We sold catfish and produce, and we continued selling produce. And then we started raising chickens, um, and we uh, we raised chickens for meat and chickens for eggs, and we also had ducks for eggs um, that we would uh, we those chickens for meat. We would raise them, butcher them, package them, sell them. There was a lot more profit in that because we actually owned the, the chickens, so we didn't have to buy them from anyone. So we had, you know, fairly low overhead on that on, and expenses on that end. So this was our very first adventure. This is really the only time that I've ever put any kind of lettering on my vehicle. But I chose not to do it for the handyman business because I was advised um, that it really changes the insurance needs for your truck. 
So I am pretty excited about these new magnets because for a little while now, my magnets have looked horrible on my truck. Let's go take a look at them. So it's been very desperate that I've needed these things. So let's put them on right now. See, this is how my current magnet looks and it's all, you know, coming apart. It's probably a year and a half old or so. And so I'm gonna replace it with this guy. Same look and everything, just a better magnet. 